I, <laughs> that sucks! I, I scrubbed it. So only time, uh, and it's very unfortunate. I, I, we have no idea who made this. We have no idea how much it costs, but it is so unfortunate that sucks. that sucks. Um, uh, that is riddled with um, a, a lot of reduction. Mm. Um, that that I can't say that I would pay any money for it. <laughs> G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People. We've got six absolutely cracking wines to blind taste right now. Big thank you to Sometimes Always for organizing the wines and keeping us on our toes. Uh, if you are new to the channel, we're a blind tasting channel. We try to identify these wines and tell you how much we'd actually spend on them, what we think they're worth and where they possibly are from. If you're looking for a way to be able to support the channel, if you press like, subscribe, I know that's probably like a real YouTuber-y thing to say, but to be fair, it is actually how we grow the channel. So uh, by all means, please uh, jump on there, give us some su support. Jump into Discord below if you want to chat to us directly and join the ever-growing community of wine lovers on there. But enough said from me, let's jump into the wines. Seen with flash. Uh, let's go. <laughs> it's red, as I said. Uh, I don't know how many different scarlet, crimson, maroon descriptors you're going to cop from me today because there are a few going around. Okay. Wow. Uh, interesting. A little bit port porty. Not what I expected. It's not really showcasing a lot of like oak ar aromatics, uh, but it is certainly aged, certainly developed. To be honest, it smells a little bit old schooly, a little bit Barossa like. Um. It's one of those wines that aromatically is far better than it kind of presents itself on the palate. Yep, okay. I like it more than I thought I was going to. I thought it was going to be a little bit spicier and a little bit more uh, aggressive on the palate, but it's not. It does have the real cherry flavor, the real fruit flavor coming through, which is my absolute pick of the bunch when it comes to red wines. I want some real fruit characteristics in there. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's really interesting, no matter what it is. Uh, although it's not entirely to my palate, it's just not looking as fresh as I would expect. I would spend 30 bucks and I would buy, I'd buy a bottle. Kind of not my bag. Uh, I'm really sorry, uh, but I'm sure there's going to be winners out there for it. Wine number two. This is looking a little bit lighter in terms of colour. It doesn't quite have the haziness that I've objectively, objectively, subjectively, subjectively identified as something that happens in all natty red wines. It's unfortunately really distracting to the nose. Like it is, it's really reductive. It's a bit of a shame. I kind of don't want to put it in my mouth. I, I'm going to actually say, unfortunately, this is the most reductive wine we've ever had on the show. Ooh. It is reductive. I know a lot of people will hate that smell, but I don't find it a bad smell. It kind of it, it it kind of indicates that there is an element of trying to retain freshness and over time I reckon this will blow off. I reckon it needs probably like six to twelve months in a, a cell or anything like that. Uh, but overall I might it might be really good. Let's just hope it backs that up on the palate, I guess. Look, sadly it doesn't. It, everything I said before, throw it out the window. Because this wine is boring. So what they should do is they should sell this with a peg. Or several pegs, because you shouldn't drink a whole bottle of wine to yourself. Give them several pegs, put that on your nose, and then drink it. But if you want something less complicated, just get a bottle of wine that doesn't smell like a fucking port -a It's looking rough. It's looking really rough. That would need a lot of decanting to save it. All right, number three. Same kind of line. Medium brodied. Got this kind of like bricky clay thing to it. it. Smells like walking through a garden that has fruit and flowers in it. The last one smells like walking through a garden where they keep cows and festival goers. Like, it, anyway. Yeah, okay. Well, we're talking Pinot of potentially the highest order here. It's actually quite a really interesting nose because there is a very sort of heavy savory element to it, but there's been a, a um, modicum of élevage that has made it not look that sort of forest floor savory. It is, but it isn't. Uh, it's more like log cabin savory. Oh yeah, okay. Um, unfortunately, it's like, it's quite fresh. It has this kind of like almost like, I think this is probably one of these winemaker things where I know what a fresh red grape tastes like. And it feels like I've just grabbed a fresh grape that's just about to be fermented that has, I, have, I can taste the flesh and the skin and the seeds all in my mouth. So it's not perfect. It's not my exact wine, but what I was talking about with wine number one, where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just not quite into like the bigger things. I like the middle palate, blah, blah, blah. This is mid middle palate. It's not heavy. It's not light. There's a little bit of flavor there. For me, I would just like there to be a slightly longer finish on it. I think it dies away a little bit too quickly, but what it's got at the start of the tasting, that front palate, which again, I'm just inventing palates now. The front palate, the first thing that happens when it hits your tongue is like, ah, oh, thank goodness you're here.
All right, moving on to wine number four. We're, we're back into a sort of a, a bit more youthful area here. We've got, you know, a lot more sort of purple highlighted uh, red wine. It smells like sarsaparilla. A bit more Pinot-y or it's a bit more grenache or gamay. Yeah, really quite vibrant here. Hmm. I think potentially, I mean, it's certainly got a bit of oak there, which I'm quite surprised at. It feels like it's actually got a little bit of like a carbonic thing going on, like a uh, fizziness to it, but I'm um, not too sure. This is sick. This smells fantastic. Get yourself around this. It smells a little bit sweet, which is an indication that it probably won't be sweet, but I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic that this is going to be the wine for me. Going to be throwing about 35. How about 12 bottles? I love it. I think it's really, really good. I think it's fantastic. The, the nose intrigues me, and I actually think it's just because I'm the first one to taste these today, so I think this is really going to open up by the time the guys see it. I'll go nine, and then I'll get three of the first. Yeah, I'll, nine, nine. Very sensible. It's a new category. I mean, I ordered a shot of the second one, so why can't I have nine bottles of the fourth one? Makes a lot of sense. Moving on to first and only uh, white wine of the lineup. So let's have a look. Good, clear, well filtered white wine, which smells like really high quality Riesling. What, what is it with wine number five and being Riesling, honestly? Uh, last week, it's the exact same smell, to be honest. It's acidic, tart, white grape smell. I'm drinking it 100% Riesling, 100% mainly because it's sweet and it's got sugar in it. Uh, and wines of this sort of clarity and pristineness and certainly the smell and all those indicative aromas, but it's the sweetness. You chuck sweetness on top of that, it can only really be one thing. It is pristine, like lemongrass. It smells like lemongrass. It's like, is it German or is it Australian? If that's not German Riesling, I have no idea what is. He can super impose Brendan's face onto me as I say that, because that's a Brennan Carterism. If that's X, then I don't know what Y is. Sweet! It is so sweet! This tastes exactly like Panda Panda. We used to make Panda Panda at work. This tastes like Panda Panda. Wow. That's fucking, yeah, that is like, you wanna get, you wanna get wine drunk real quick? Yeah, that's the, that's the stuff. Um, that nose, that lemongrass nose, I'm sold, I love it. That's so unique, that's so incredible. That's, yeah, one of the better wines we've seen on the show. Definitely top 10 for me. Back to uh, medium bodied red with a bit of a brickish hue right at the end. Pinot or Nebbiolo, what's the guess? Freshly roasted and pulled espresso. Oh man, yeah, it's it's coffee. It's pure coffee. Like, I, coffee's a tasting though that gets thrown around like it's gone out of fashion, but I can actually smell like freshly pulled espresso in this. It's crazy. It smells like money. It smells like oak. I've realized now that all the times I've described wines as smelling like expensive wooden furniture, that's probably because they're effectively stored in expensive wooden furniture. Hey. I'm vexed, guys. I am vexed. It is a gorgeous wine. This is a gorgeous wine. I love it. Moderate to low acidity, moderate to low tannin, lighter color, matured and aged. Grenache? Grenache? This feels like good aged Nebbiolo. That coffee thing is unbelievable. This is this is a wine that I, I really need to understand more of. It's got high acid, feels high alcohol, got no tannin, so that everything that would indicate Nebbiolo to me is kind of out the window, so I'd think age. No. Not like, not hard no, but also like not even a soft yes. Look, there's the six. I'm not confident about anything I said, but I can't wait to be roasted by the boys as per usual. So we'll see what they thought as well. <laughs> 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 Fucking put that on camera. What if I told you that I'm only here to get subs to my YouTube channel? One for the people on YouTube. I'm not joking, please. It helps me with my <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> much I care about this channel. It's my only dating app from. And <laughs> uh, welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about uh, Henry's dating apps. None of the week, another six wines. Uh, one of them clearly we've, we've all swallowed very, very much. Uh, but well, we will get to that. What were the general vibes on the bracket? Like for me, this was really good because I'm currently studying wine in general and just like trying to like level up my kind of authoritative knowledge of wines. And this was fucking really difficult was very much an exercise in quality it's yeah sort of like like these were all wine, all completely different wines but we are talking there are some here that that pass for very poor there are some here that were you know good great outstanding and mm. and the whole spectrum so and that's one of the harder things to do is actually to go what is quality uh we're actually yeah. going to be able to tease it apart here i think number one i bought one bottle i bought one bottle too i bought three okay <laughs> yeah it felt it felt like a disjointed peanut yeah. You know, it has this like kind of like savory 
like earthy character, but it's all out of whack. Um, where, where, uh, one bottle, one bottle, three bottles. Where are we at? Wow. Okay. Pino, more Pino. Pino. Shout. Me, more Pino -y. Pino. Pino. Yeah, Oops. well done. There you go. Unfortunate, unfortunate, because uh, we we do love the Hinchkey family. We do love the Hinchkey wines. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, I said it looks like Pinot, but it looks like Adelaide Hills Pinot. And this is the thing with Adelaide Hills Pinot. That's not saying that's bad. It's it's hard to achieve greatness in the hills. Hmm. But then we see sort of, we see this, and it's sort of like, well, this is sort of like that. It's good enough. Mm. It, I think here you're definitely paying for Hinchkeys. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I'd rather drink proper than this. Like, what are we talking about? I will hands down say that the only wine that I've tried in Australia that's over eight hundred dollars that I've actually said I will pay money for that is Henschke's Two Hill of Grace. Mm, it is yeah. maybe the greatest wine Australia has ever produced. That's my personal opinion. But if they're gonna make Adelaide Hills Pinot, they need to fucking learn what they're doing. There's no disrespect for the Henschke family because what they what that Henschke family has done for Australian wine is incomparable. Yeah. You yeah. cannot disrespect what they've done. Well, um, speaking of wines, Anita has its socks pulled up. Oh, I don't Jesus care Christ. if it was your mother who made this. I'm not saying anything nice about this wine. <laughs> I, that sucks! This is I scrubbed it. It's the only time, uh, and it's very unfortunate. Uh, uh, we have no idea who made this. We have no idea how much it costs, but it is so unfortunate that time. Sucks! Uh, that is riddled with um, a, a lot of reduction mm. um, that, that I can't say that I would pay any money for it. I'd turn it away. This is one of those rare times where I wouldn't swallow the fact that I asked the son to give me a glass. God. Turn it away and say, I'm sorry, but. Yeah. What does it cost? Know. Say 100. Fuck oh, off. <laughs> <laughs> no. What is it? You would honestly. Oh, it's Putty de Cruz. Okay, who gives a shit? Fucking Spanish. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like. <look. laughs> what are you going to get the Spanish? <laughs> no, no, no. Because it's like. They're not watching. This. this it's one of these things like, that we have in the natural the, yeah. wine industry is just like overblown brands that you have this kind of big label energy and it doesn't back up like, there used to be an entire lineup of wines that look like that and called themselves natural wines and therefore they were better than the rest yeah, yeah. this is what gave it that reputation this harks back to that unfortunately yeah. it's not acceptable anymore it's one of the only times i'm going to say this on the show but if you've got 50 dollars and you can choose between buying a bottle of this or putting it into the pokies put it in the pokies you might get better <laughs> <at that>. <laughs> <laughs> you might yeah look so you don't endorse gambling but i tell you what it's probably a better Shot no, no, no. You yeah. may as well piss it Either way, you're more. wasting 50 bucks, but at least you get some flashing yeah, lights and look, sounds with the Pokemon machine. <laughs> we celebrate a label like that far more than we celebrate our own producers. Yeah. Like, you could spend the same amount of money on a bottle of Murdoch Hill for, and you can get two bottles of it, and it's far better. And that's just yeah. in our own backyard. You could do the yeah. same thing with Mac Forbes or uh, Dormalodo or anything like that. Whatever Hinchkey, state you're man. in. Henschke! Like, Fucking like, and most natural wine lovers will not do that because of the fucking name brand. But if yeah. you spend fifty five dollars on that and you're that disappointed, it's so disappointing. And that's it. That's this a, is across three different levels as well. Like, and all three of us are just like, oh yeah, this sucks. If I, I send that back at a restaurant, and the restaurant that's serving that would probably send it back to me, and go and tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah. Like, yeah, and that's why no one drinks wine. <laughs> <laughs> but, wine like, this is the problem. This yeah. is the problem. Why, why we all about the next wine. Big fan. Massive fan. How much? Um, what do you want? To, uh, I thought 110 and 12. 40 bucks, six. Uh, three bottles, 48. Pricey. I mean, not so pricey, not Berg pricey. Right. What have we got? Is that? What have we got? Uh, Rugentes, 45 degrees. What is that? It's like. Uh, Patagonia Pinot Noir. Noir. Patagonia? From fucking Argentina. 2018. Wow. Bit of Patagucci. Yeah. Let's go. Age, age, uh, I think I might have even said Chilean. Uh, well I think done. the tasting as well. Uh, because nice. there's this sort of like, um, uh, bi they call it bipolar ripeness, which is really confusing where it's like, it's green, but it's, it's phenolically ripe. So how do you get both? Like green acids, but it's phenolically ripe. You often see them in Southern American. Pinot, it is famed for Pinot. We've not seen a lot of South American wines on no. here. We've not seen a lot of Argentinian, no. Malbec, we, we don't see it. We don't see enough of it in Australia, to be honest. Um, so uh, next wine, uh, wine number four. What do we got? I liked it. I really liked it too. Yeah. Oh, that was not too bad. I actually sm thought it smelled like sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla? Sarsaparilla. How much are we, are we spending? Oh boy. Oh boy. Henry's on. Henry is Henry's absolutely on, on tonight. Yeah, right. Is it Aussie? That's Testalunga. That's South that's Africa. South Africa. South African. Yeah, so that's Pinotage. Yeah, uh, Testalunga, absolute uh, hallmark producer of Swartland. If you wanted, uh, you know, a 
a reason to buy this producer? Buy the Shannon. Buy the Shannon. The Shannon is fucking incredible. Definitely buy the Shannon. It's so good. Like, Shannon, you know, love. You're the Shannon right man. Here. I'm the Shannon man. <laughs> but the Shannon is fucking amazing. This is pretty damn good, but yeah. spend your money on the Shannon. Speaking of goddamn good. Oh, yeah. yeah Holy the glass is gone. shit. This yeah, is no, my that's, line, of, that's, line of line. That's up. all you need to say. Yeah, one line up for me as well. Yeah. Why number five being Riesling every week? What's going on? <laughs> it's gotta be Riesling. It's gotta be Riesling. It's gotta be Riesling. It's gotta be, Riesling. It's gotta be like Gross. German yeah. off dry. Banging Riesling. Yeah. I, I, Damn. I've priced it German. I think it's Riesling free. I've gone yeah. really but cheap with it. How cheap? How cheap? <laughs> 24 bucks. Not a chance. Ooh, they, like if it's if it's Riesling free, it might be. But I think he charges like, like 35, 35 or 40 yeah. for that uh, yeah. off dry style. Called 12 bottles, German Riz, 80 bucks. 85, 12 bottles. Yeah, 12 bucks and 24 dollars. But that's no reflection on sort of price. That's more sort of about like I just wanted it to be 24 bucks. I was going for the, the triangle, <laughs> right? Okay, Lockie, what All is right. it? How much? Ooh. Ooh, okay, that's really interesting for 53. It's a skinny It is it's German. German. It's German cabinet. Reason cabinet. Wow. Bang. Wow. As far as $53 you can spend on a German reason goes, that is fucking excellent value. We know that the Australian dollar sucks right now. We know that yep. we're going through inflation right now. How is German reason coming down in price? Obviously it's 2020, but wait for the 21s to land in Australia. You're going to be like $90. 9%, so we're talking about... Uh, pretty, Super light. Yeah, but mm. also phenolically right. Like really quite right. Great for kids. Um, we're talking amazing. about, uh, yeah, and left a decent amount. I would, wouldn't surprise me if that's like 36 grams residual. Still, it's like a that's lightning crap. insane. Bang. Straight through the, the palate. Oh, man. Amazing. Fucking brilliant. Yeah. That is an awesome wine. Final wine of the lineup. Really, really cool. I am so fascinated to what you think of this wine because I thought it was brilliant, but yeah. I have no idea what it is. I have absolutely no idea what it is. It smells like freshly brewed espresso. I have absolutely no idea what it Fuck, is. Fuck, it does too. Yeah, like, you're good at this. How many bottles did you think that yeah. I would like of this? Like uh, one. One? Yeah, three. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. I get it, but like these guys like it way more than me. But yeah. look, I had 80 bucks and 12. I had six and 110. Yeah, three for 30. Whoa! What is this? Kids got to get to learning. What? Sangiovese? From what? Canberra? From what? Canberra? That's I thought crazy. they just did fireworks like and pornography. I didn't know they made wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. Good on them. There's places outside of Fishwick, brother. Yeah. And politicians. Uh, we, need, yeah. we, need to, we need to get him some fucking clonic killer. It's called the Dark Horse Sangiovese, which is very, very fitting. If you like that sort of old school style, um, this is going to reward you in space. Yeah. If you like old, yeah. really old Grenache, Really, really old Nebbiolo. This kind of gives you that sort of thing. Yeah, is, yeah this is this is actually worth it. I think this is donking really cool. value. So and also, I, I love to see Canberra grow. You know, I'd love to see more people buy some Cam Canberra wine. Hey guys, we went everywhere. We went high quality, really low quality. We went everywhere. Price points. We delved into overblown brands and underrated German Rieslings. That's that's this is parkour. <gasps> Hardcore parkour. I, I love to learn. I learned. <laughs> yeah, look, that was a lot of fun. That slaps. Get the Rizza. It's really the good. Rizza is yeah, the get the Rizza is the Rizza. Get the Rizza. The Rizza is apex. Until then, guys, next week, we're gonna be here. Bye.